Let's see how his opponent's uh, looking right now. Nikolai Valuev just going through the motions. It'd be a, a long skipping rope, probably a washing line he's using there. <laughs> <laughs> Tarzan rope. But Wes didn't say it was impossible to, to beat this man. He just said he made some mistakes. The Wes is not as tall as David Hay. This man is, is, is not as mobile as Ruiz. He knows, he knew what to do, but he's made a mistake. He's gauged everyone's opinion, David Hay, about how to beat this man. He's spoken to you all individually. Yeah, you know, I mean, there, there, is, there's a, there is a way to beat him. He's been beaten before, so the, the, there's a blueprint. It's whether David Hay can follow that blueprint. You know, he, I mean, he's got a lot to prove as well, Valuev. I mean, he's had this young, this young guy's come out of cruiserweight who's been calling him ugly, calling him fat, calling him everything. I mean, he's going to be very, very determined. I mean, he's got a point to prove himself that I think we're all overlooking. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Valio has never proved himself to be a brilliant champion and he's got a real challenge tonight. OK, the big fight is on the way next. David and Goliath nearly upon us. Ring walks less than 10 minutes away. They are willing on a David Hay victory in Germany. Will there be a British heavyweight champion of the world? So where will the big fight be won and lost? Is Adam Smith. This is the moment that he's dreamt of since first lacing up the gloves as David Hay aims to be crowned world heavyweight champion against the enormous seven-foot Russian Nikolai Valuev. This is what it's all been about, you know, I can taste it, it's around the corner, you know, I can't wait. You know, it's, it's, it's been my life, lifelong ambition to be, you know, in this position I am, you know, fight for the heavyweight title. I'm not going to lose, I'm going to win. Both have prepared diligently for their first outings of 2009. The David and Goliath promotion's been fascinating, but how will this intriguing battle unfold? In 52 fights, no one has really hurt Valuev, and only Ruslan Shagayev has managed to beat him on points. Valuev's aging but experienced, and will try to control the fight behind his efficient jab and right hand. Then expect the Russian to utilize his huge advantages in weight and strength to tire the Englishman. I've got too much speed, too much skill, too much pedigree for this guy. You know, the guy's got the size, the strength, the arm length, but you know, I've got a, I've got something up my sleeve that will counteract that, no doubt about it. Hay has speed, so might try fast raiding tactics against the slower Valuev. Or will he use his explosive power and go for broke early? Hay can surely expect no favours in Germany, and he has knocked out almost everyone he's faced. He's won a lot of decisions, you know, and um, I, I can't allow that to come into my mind. I've just got out there and fight my fight, you know. I know, to, in a sense, you're fighting the referee and the judges, but, you know, I've got a feeling that, you know, that won't happen. Can David Hay follow Frank Bruno and Lennox Lewis to claim boxing's ultimate prize? Massive heroes of mine, Frank Bruno and Lennox Lewis, you know, both of them represent the Brit Britain. Beautifully, they went out there and be the best, the best in the world, and that's exactly what I aim to do. The Flash Londoner enters his date with destiny against the most imposing figure possible in a lonely ring a long way from home. We're both supremely confident. I know I've got what it takes to beat him, and I'm pretty positive he feels exactly the same way. And when you get that with two, two fighters 100% confident, you're always going to get a good fight. Can he do it? Let's head uh, ringside in Germany and join Jim Watts and Ian Dark for their final thoughts ahead of this big one. Well, you can feel the tension here. You really can. I think this is the biggest fight with a British boxer since we saw Ricky Hatton against Floyd Mayweather. I think the nation is hooked on this one. One thing I've noticed here, Jim, is it's a big ring, and that is in Hayes' favour. Yep, I'm surprised at that. I mean, normally when you box abroad, you know, every advantage you could have is taken away from you, but it's a massive ring. And I'm looking forward to when David comes out to see what kind of reception he gets. I don't think the reception will affect him in the slightest, but I'm looking forward to hearing what it's like. He's got under a lot of people's skin here. 
it's absolutely packed out a lot of British fans here as well we've seen Millwall Football Club flags draped because of course uh, David Hay is a bit of a Millwall fan as well now the atmosphere I wonder I just wonder all these insults from Hay will the crowd here turn against him yeah, I think so. I think a lot of people have come here to see David have his mouth shut, but I don't think that'll affect David's performance. I think he's going to go out and give it everything. It's a pity. I mean, he hasn't proven that if his power will work at heavyweight, his stamina will work at heavyweight, and his punch resistance at heavyweight. These are all the things that are uncertain. If he had grown into the heavyweight division, we could have a lot of confidence, but I still think he has got a great chance of winning. Remember, Ruslan Shugaev gave away six stone, six pounds, though, to Valuev, and he won. Little British fella beats the giant Russian. Well, the way in illustrated the size difference, seven stone. Could be even more on the night. I like the way what, what uh, David's coming at, 15 stone, 15, eight, is it? Perfect. Perfect to give him that uh, mobility, speed, agility. Looks great as well, doesn't he? <laughs> Looks like everybody does look really good there, right then. And you know, that suits him, suits him down to the ground. Glenn, how does someone beat a giant like that? Well, you know, Shagayev managed to do it, so there is a way to do it. He's got to use what he's got. He's got to give him talents of speed and power. He's got to be in and out, you know, give him movement, frustrate him, and then get in quick. And he can beat him to the punch. And if he, if he can just wobble him a little bit, if he can just hurt him, then he can jump all over him. And that's what he's got to try and do. Is inactivity an issue? It's 347 days since Hayes' last fight. Could yeah, that be an issue Seven tonight? rounds in two years. But at the 29, I don't think so. And he, they train really, really well you know, at, in the Hay camp. And uh, I think he'd be very fit. I, think, I don't think so. You know, I think it's got to... You know, he's only had seven rounds in two years. I think that, that's... You know, all the sparring you do... It's, it's not got the best have preparation, but will it's it really... It's got to have an effect, you know? I mean, you know, yes, he's done the work. Yes, he's lifted the weight and done the run. But it's different when you're faced with the biggest heavyweight of all time. One thing that Valuev does is he reserves a lot of energy. He doesn't use his footwork uh, very much. So that's why to the back end of a fight, he's actually, he does pretty well for a big fella. Mm. Stays there, done the distance. And he, he's, he's just all arms. And so David's got to make him use the ring, use the footwork, use huge, the movement. Huge, huge arms, but an educated jab as well he's yeah, got Valuev. Yeah, you know, we, we've seen a little bit of him. And, and he's got a good jab, a straight right hand. He doesn't do anything spectacular but what he does he does very well you know he's very solid he makes the best of being a mountain of a man I mean Hay could hit him on the chin you know and wobble him which will be the first time value has been wobbled and we'll, we'll see what happens then but to do the sort of tactics we've talked about we've seen that beats value the, the, the shaggy of in and out and work rate it takes a lot of energy you know, I'm we, feeling nervous <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling really nervous let's get your predictions Johnny energy, discipline David Hay I think he's gonna get it everything right tonight I you know I hope he can go in he can Follow the tactics, he can win, but I just think the big man's just too big. I, I want a knockout for David Hay, but my head's telling me maybe my heart's ruling there, and uh, I'm not sure. Well, here we go, Britain. Let's uh, hand back to our commentary team ringside. 9,000 fans there as well. David, well, can he slay Goliath? Jim Watt and Ian Dark. Thank you very much indeed. Everybody hushed, everybody waiting and the tension is tangible at this point as we await David Hay's ring entrance. And one little thing that maybe David Hay is not aware of is he will be kept waiting about five minutes, we think, in the ring once he's arrived there. He's got to keep his cool then, Jim. Yeah, that's one of the many strokes that, that are worked. But when you box abroad, uh, obviously the, the enemy promoter, as we can call them, they don't want you to win. They want to unsettle you in every way possible. They're leaving you stewing in the ring against what could be a crowd who don't like you one little bit. It could be a pretty hostile crowd. I know the, the German public are known as being very fair you know, bit, bit, you know, and appreciating talent and, and so forth. But I don't think they're going to like David Hay too much for some of the things he's been saying about Valuev. We await the ring entrance and that, that five minute wait is because we understand that Valuev's ring entrance is a fairly protracted affair. He, of course, very much the home fighter, Russia's first world heavyweight champion, but adopted in Germany, which is why they've sold the tickets here and why all his big fights are here. I mean, a lot of time in his career, people thought of him as a circus act, didn't they, Jim? It's only lately that people have started to respect him as a bona fide holder of a version of the World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, but to his credit, he has worked at the game, he's mastered the basics, so Michael Buffer is now in the ring now. Flown in from America, well known in these parts. 
They put on a very stylish show for the big fight nights in Germany. And incidentally, this arena built on the site of the infamous rallies which are part of this city's grisly past. Having said that, the reception, I think, of all the British fans here at the David Hay camp this week has been nothing but friendliness and charm. And this little weight just adds to the air of expectation a bit, doesn't it, really? I mean, I think people, you heard the lads in the studio say it, I think everybody watching at home and everybody certainly here, including us, a little feeling when you've got a big fight, that tingle in the stomach. Yeah, well, here's David leaving now. Obviously, a little sign of nerves in his face, but if it was otherwise, you would be worried. He's shown no fear at all, all week. David Hay. He's wearing a poppy that you'll notice there. And that reminds me that this fight is being watched by British troops around the world, all over the world. Gentlemen, ladies, we are delighted you can join us. Settle back and watch the drama unfold. Hay is about to make his entrance. He knows the plan. He's got to stick to the plan. He's got to be icy cool in there tonight. There is a way to win, but he can't become the gunslinger, as he has done rather too often in the past in his career. It's a different size of task tonight in more ways than one. And these are pictures that the people in the arena here can't see. It's a lonely feeling now, isn't it, Jim? Yep, uh, it's uh, time to put up or shut up. He's talked the talk, as he knows he said that himself, now it's time to walk the walk. But uh, we we'll have to remember he is a genuine world-class fighter with real power. So I hope he turns it all on tonight. Uh, let's get this party started! Coming to the ring at this time, the challenger from Great Britain, David Haymaker! going to get a great reception from the British fans who are here but they are outnumbered by the Valuev support and of course they have read everything Hay has said about Valuev being a zombie, robotic, noisy, smelly and knocking off the head of a cardboard cutout of Valuev at a press conference. They won't all like him and you can hear that now. Not we can expect a fairly hostile crowd but David you. That's what, we, what to expect, I mean he's been doing this for months so he knows the crowd are going to be against him but he's not in the least bit bothered. He's boxed abroad before and boxed well abroad, I don't think that will be a factor. Giving away seven stones in weight and nine inches in height and seven inches in reach. In boxing's long history nobody has ever given away that much weight in a heavyweight championship fight and won. Cool as a cucumber. Yep, he's, he's, he really is looking good, he's looking focused, he's patting people's hands as he passes, his eyes are staring straight ahead the same way he did at the weigh-in yesterday when he stared down Valuev. He is really looking forward to this, he really believes in himself. The little doubts that we maybe have, they may be at the back of David's mind, but he's put them to the back and he's going to disregard them. We've seen one or two British boxers in the past rather dissolve on the night in big fights. Nassim Hamed against Marco Antonio Pereira. Ricky Hatton on the night of the Mayweather fight, I thought, looked a little neurotic, to be honest, by his standards. Frank Bruno in his second fight with Mike Tyson crossing himself on his way to the ring and being beaten. But Hay just looks totally composed. Look at this. You know, I had the feeling he enjoyed the camp, all the way through the camp, he enjoyed it, he treated it as an adventure, and he's still doing that, he's still treating it like a big adventure, he's loving every minute of this. I think he sees this as the biggest and the most special night of his life. 
That posing by the apron reminded me of Chris Eubank when he came over here and beat Graziano Roccagiani, started conducting the crowd's booze. And now, with the live performance of Sunrise Avenue and their hit song, Not Again, making his entrance to the ring, the defending WBA heavyweight world champion, Nico David Hayes wife Natasha at ringside. Agony for her, of course. Here's Michael Buffer with the ring announcement. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we shall honor the homeland of challenger and champion with their respective national anthems. Valuev singing along to the Russian anthem, for part of it anyway. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, meine Damen und Herren, willkommen. Welcome to the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA. Heavyweight Championship of the World. Presented by Sauerland Event and Don King Productions in association with Haymaker and Golden Boy Promotions. This bout is sanctioned by the FBA President Villabalt Palatine and the World Boxing Association President Gilberto Mendoza. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point system are from Italy, Stefano Carroza. From Spain, Juan Manuel Garcia Reyes. And from the United States, Tom Miller. And inside the ring, the referee in charge of the action at the bell from Puerto Rico, Luis Pabon. And now, ladies and gentlemen, meine Damen und Herren, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Waiting out of the red corner, Del Roteca, wearing the Union Jack colors, official weight, 98.4 kilograms. Professional record, 23 fights, 22 victories, including 21 knockouts. From London, England, the challenger, undefeated as a heavyweight, and the former cruiserweight champion of the world, David, the haymaker. Fighting out of the blue corner, De Blauenecke, wearing black, official weight, 143.3 kilograms. Professional record, 52 fights, 50 victories, including 34 KOs from St. Petersburg, Russia. The two-time reigning, defending WBA heavyweight champion of the world, the Russian giant. Tommy Gasparai, Nikolai, Nico Baluya. Referee is from Puerto Rico. There's been so much talk here. 
but it has to stop now. This is where Hay has to back up the words with action. He's got personal with Valuev, and now he has to get up close. OK, guys, I give you an introduction in the dressing room. They're having a clean match. Good luck, I got pleasure. Valuev has never been off his feet in 52 contests. David Hay, with a reputation as a power puncher, will we see the hit-and-run speed style that most people think he needs in this fight? I hope we do see that, Ian, but I hope that the first chance he gets, he tests Valuev's chin, because I would say David is the biggest puncher Valuev has faced. And what happens the first time Valuev lands? against the fighter who's been on the floor a few times. Hey, just look at the difference here. Valoev, immense. This is the difference in size between a heavyweight and a flyweight. But of course, anyone over 14 stone four in boxing is automatically a heavyweight, which is why these two are in the same ring. And Valoev has landed and perfected the method of getting up close without taking punches. He's got David on his back foot, which will take some of the power away, obviously. David is going to have to punch upwards, which will also take away a little bit of his power. So it's going to have to be in-out raiding tactics, but he's been pushed, as we expected, straight on to the back foot. Just on a reconnaissance mission early on, Hay, trying not to get involved, pot-shotting the odd shot, then on his bike again, Valoev, you can see what he's about, he knows what Hay will try, and he will try to cut off the corners, ram home his jab, and if he can, a quite damaging uppercut too. And he does have an excellent defence, Valuev. He's not quick, so he has to compensate for that with a real tight defence. And he's walking up close already to he. He could end up burning a lot of nervous energy just because he's under pressure every second. Tried the right hand there, but he was on the move. So obviously losing a lot of his power. Might need a step ladder to land the punches as well, hey. He's had his trainers wearing seven-inch gothic heels to try to simulate what Valuev will be like in the ring. He's been punching up until the equipment's been changed, so he's punching high, but it's difficult. Difficult. Well, the best you can see is he's managing maybe to frustrate Valuev in the opening round, but uh, not really landing any punches, which is fine. He's right to have a look. See, you can imagine what it's like giving away seven stone, but you don't know until you're in there doing it. And David Hay is just finding out what it's like right now. Good body shot there from Hay. That brought a roar of applause from the British fans. He does have 13 wins inside two rounds. Hay, he definitely can hit, and I suspect he can hit even up at heavyweight. But this is only his third fight at the weight. Did anyone get a title shot that quick other than Pete Rabamaker, who fought Floyd Patterson in his first fight in 56? It was just kind of thumped with a counter punch there and you see it put him straight back onto the defensive he is just realising how huge this task is his tactics are right, he's a little bit negative as far as winning the opening round goes he's landed a good body shot but this is the tactics he has to employ and hopefully keep frustrating Valoev into making mistakes but Valoev defence is tight in that instance good tactics these I think from Hay, and he might have landed more despite being on the back foot. Alexander Zimin is the recently recruited new trainer for Valoev. That was after his only defeat against Ruslan Shagaya a few fights ago. Going to sting him, faint first, sting him and be gone. Stay away from the ropes, and when you get close to the ropes, fidget and go. Adam Booth is the training. You'll notice all the team are wearing blue. They wear colours, apparently according to that night's strategy. It was red against Enzo Macronelli for aggression when they took him out in two rounds. Tonight, icy blue. Cool well, approach. That, that was a sensible opening round. He did land a good body shot but he was forced onto the, the defensive for the full three minutes. So, obviously away from home, difficult to hope you're going to win a round on the back foot like that. Yes, there's always the question, 
of how the judges would score a round like that. But aggression has to be effective aggression. I'm not sure Valo had landed much at all, you know, in that first round, despite plodding forward all the time. Yeah, they landed a couple of counters that knocked David to the side a little bit. They weren't great clean punches, which is maybe just as well. Not really many punches landed from either man. You can't really score for one punch, if you like, in a round. Cheryl cat and mouse stuff. But so far, so good, in a way, for David Hay. Because he really can't afford to just stand there mixing it. He'll reckon, I think, at some point, he'll leap in with one of those hooks, and he's hoping he'll get Valoev going for the first time in the Russian's career. Well, they just come up with a, a, a cheeky little left hook there. He's not looking for power, which I'm pleased about. He's mobile. He's not taking anything. Valoev trying to raise the pace a little bit. He's becoming frustrated. The crowd were booing a little bit there, but I think they want to uh, hate to stand and trade. Obviously, he will not do that. He does generally have a gunslinger's mentality, David Hay, when he's in there. And I wonder if at some point the switch will move over back to that. But the team have worked so hard on the plan that they don't want it thrown away. Well, Lennox Lewis said it, didn't he? You can't hit what you can't catch. Landed a couple of jabs to the chest, Valuev, but he's not catching David's head, which is good news. David needs these tactics, but just has to land a few more punches. He's been much more mobile than Evander Holyfield, who fought Valuev a year ago. Very close fight. Many people thought Holyfield won it. He didn't get it not here in Germany, and Holyfield was 46 at the time. Having said that, he's probably got a better chin than Hay. Well, he has. I mean, this is just so difficult for Hay. Just come up for the cruiser. Oh, beautiful right hand! Oh, terrific shot there. Valoev shakes his head. The giant just demurred for a moment there. Well, yeah, that, that was the Valuev coming back with the jab there. Well, then the better punches have come from here in this round. Still, obviously, looking a little bit negative, but that's what we want to see from him. This may be the only way to do it with a seven stone differential. Welcome back. They're happy enough in that corner. Adam Booth saying to David Hay, keep on breaking his heart. Yeah, I think him, by that he means keep on frustrating him because that's what he's doing. Landed a couple of decent jabs to the body, a lovely right hand to the head. And I think he is beginning to frustrate Valuev. Here's round three. Valuev, who's been a pro now for 16 years. Don King is at ringside, the American promoter has a slice of him. Leading. One of our writers, Ron Lewis of the Times, to come up with the famous line that King had found his Kong. Well, I think Valoev's going to have to stop throwing single punches if he wants to catch here. I mean, against tricky opponents of any description, single punches are the last thing you need. So I wonder if his corner are telling him to put punches together, put them out in threes and one may land. But single shots, he can see them coming. See, that's the big question already here. Is what Hay is doing enough to win the round with the judges? I gave him the last round for the jabs to the body and the good solid right hand to the head because Valoed was sitting fresh here a lot of the time. But I don't really feel that the judges would see it that way. Valoed is the one trying to make this a fight. And in any rounds that are close, he's going to get the nod. Could be too that Valoed gets tired, you know. Starting that 22 and a half stone Hulk around the ring trying to chase Hay. Well, 11 times he's done the 12 round distance, and in most of those fights, it's the last few rounds that have won him the fight. So he's a good 12 round fight, and he doesn't waste too much. There's the right hand again, left up a cut. Just mixing in the odd power shot to take the eye 
of the judges. Valoev does look frustrated. At a press conference this week, Hayes said he would make Valoev look silly and embarrass him, and then, later in the fight, knock him out. I keep feeling this is a job that's going to get bigger and tougher as it goes along for David Hay. His tactics are bang on. But, uh, I mean, he's under constant pressure. He's been forced to move all the while. He can't expect to be dictating things here. But he's quick and he's boxing so well on the back foot. He's having to produce something he's never produced before, hey, in his career. Invent a new style, but I think outstanding fighters can do that in the way that Arturo Gatti did in his uh, second fight with Mickey Ward, the brawler turned boxer. Well, he again led with a left hook to the head that landed. So Balaev struggling to find the target here. He's missing, he's becoming frustrated and he's still throwing single punches. So that's good news for Hay. I think he's landed more punches so far in this round. Balaev just can't time him. A good right hand again. Lancing blow, but a good punch nevertheless. Yep, now you see me, now you don't, wasn't it, from Hay? He's won that round, I think. In fact, I think he's won the last couple of rounds, and there was even an argument for saying he might have won the first. Whether the judges are giving them to him, that's another matter. Shaking his head, Balaev, Jim, as if to say, these aren't registering. I think they might be. Yep, the landing, that's the main thing. And uh, he sticking with the tactics, we wonder, did he have the discipline? Well, it's only three rounds, fair enough. But he's shown loads of discipline here. That's not all that happy a corner, is it? Don't think so, no. Must have known it might be a little bit like this. Hey, with his elusive, speedy tactics, almost like uh, the Grand Prix car against the traction engine. He's making Valoev hit thin air so far. Round four, but I think a major question in this fight, Jim, is can Hay do this? Will his legs last for 12 rounds? Because he's only been beyond five, four times in his pro career. Well, on the move, boxing in the back foot is fine if you're making the, your opponent waste a lot of energy, miss with a lot of punches. But I don't know that that's the case with Valoev. You know, he's solid in his feet, he just keeps edging forward, but really he should be thinking about putting punches together a little bit more. He's still feeding single shots to Hay, which Hay is coping with. I think Valoev may feel that his time will come. That's where Hay doesn't want to be. Trapped in the corner by the ropes and he got out of it very well. Almost like an electric eel. Well, he's making Valoev leap in with the punches, so at uh, 22 stone, that could take a little bit of the steam out of him. Signs that Valoez really is becoming frustrated. But the word is on Valoez, people who watch him regularly say that he comes on strong in the second half of the contest, and that may be when Hay does start to tire a little. This is really just the opening couple of chapters in the novel. Right hand from Valoez there. Not a full power shot, but it landed. He's getting closer to Hay at the moment. Hay is definitely a hitter. He always has been. He was in the amateurs. He was even as a schoolboy on the streets of Bermsey, taking on the local schoolboy champions and usually coming out on top. Valoev is trying to back him into corners. That's the second time he's launched an attack over in his own corner. He's trying to walk Hay into the corners. Great tactical discipline so far from David Hay, but the italics are for so far. Valoev doing the, the greater work in this round. Not landing an awful lot, but uh, he not really landing anything at the moment. There he is, winging away fast hands with the left hand. Didn't really seem to catch Valoev that clean with that one. But there's always the question is what he is doing is it impressing the judges? I wouldn't think so. Well, they're not noted for being generous to visiting fighters 
over here, it has to be said. Yeah, that might be true of a few countries as well. And sometimes Britain too, if we're honest with it. Up to the body from Balowev. Yep, David missed the three shots there. So Balowev's defences and his reflexes were pretty sharp then. Balowev round. Yeah, I think it was. Great arena here, state of the art, just opposite the Bundesliga football ground here in Nuremberg. And uh, it holds 9,000, and many of the fans, or nearly all of them, very, very close well, to the rim, static, which makes it brilliant. You're fainting, and then shoot fast and be gone. That's when you're landing the shots that are standing out. Everything else is to make you miss, right. to show your control in this ship, OK? Right. Good. Just because you can read him that easy, don't get complacent. Just having to rein him in a little in the corner. Mick Williamson is there, Jamie Sawyer as well, and Kevin Lidlow, all part of the close David Hay team. They've gone in alone, they've swerved the big promoters, they've got him a heavyweight title fight in only his third fight of the way. Here's round five. Valoev towering over David Hay. But he has to land punches consistently to make that weight differential tell. But he's still in control of his boxing, Valoev. He's still boxing the way he always does. Solid in his feet, edging forward slowly, nudging himself into range before he gets the punches off. On the back foot, you have to be, you know, winning rounds pretty conclusively, especially abroad, and that's going to be an added problem for David Hay. Hay tonight bidding to become only the seventh man from Great Britain to hold any version of the World Heavyweight Championship. Most famously, of course, Bob Fitzsimmons, way back, Lennox Lewis and Frank Bruno. It's a big, big task. Again, out of range, Valoev. He has to do a bit more than he's doing, I'd say, at the moment. Well, we keep talking about the, the difference in weight, a good job from Valoev, but the height difference is equally difficult to cope with. He is having to punch upwards, and then your weight tends to go back towards your heels when you're punching high, so you lose the power. Whereas Valoev is stepping into the punches, punching down, you can, you can generate a bit more power. He's trying to faint a little, Valoev, before throwing his jab. Hay has watched him studiously, they've worked on things. There's it. Two punches, three punches to the head from Hay. He has to produce these bursts, I think, to get the nod from the judges at ringside. Yeah, I think he has to do more work that's going to impress the judges. And uh, that's what's missing. I mean, the tactics are good. The evasive boxing is excellent. But is he coming back with enough? Again, way out of range. Valoev, even with a huge reach advantage, very light on his feet, making speed count for him, David Hay. But there is this dilemma, this dilemma of these tactics, the only ones I think that could possibly work, given a seven stone uh, weight differential. Are they enough, these tactics, to win the rounds? Well, I think the tactics would need to be taking a lot of the steam out of Valoev. Valoev fainting now, upping the pace here. But that's what Valoev has to do, he has to put punches together. He's not imposing himself on David Hay. He's not managing to do that. But uh, I don't know if what his corner are telling him, but really he should be letting punches go and stepping right up close, taking more chances than he's taking. Uh, spoiling up. You're going to land, you weren't that sure, but that range is almost there. Remember, you've got to spin in fast. Well, you better hope he's got a full tank of petrol, right. David Hay. I thought he was just breathing a little heavier, rather ominously, towards the end of that last round, Jim. Well, pressure takes the energy away from you, and he's under constant pressure. Every move he makes, he's been forced to make that move, and that's what takes it out of you. Valoev boxing at his own pace, and those punches look good but uh, really glancing blows.
on we go to round six moving on towards the halfway point in the contest this is the WBA version of the World Heavyweight Championship is it a coronation night for David Hay or will the dream die right here Harley Ref trying to look a little bit busier trying to get a bit of rhythm into what he's doing no, he's just throwing he's just fainting with the jab they're not trying to land they're just trying to edge his way close he's trying different things which is good news for him I suppose uh, not for David Hay I just fear that he is a little bit on the negative side that's the danger for him that people will see it like that they'll say he's not doing enough to take the title away from home good right hand from Valoev he's fainting now and you have to expect he to slow down a bit it's the second half of the fight I always worried about for he I hoped he would be in a handy lead at the halfway stage that's not the case on my card at the moment. I think some of these rounds were certainly open to interpretation. Valoev's won the last couple, but maybe Hay did open up a lead if you were looking at it from one perspective early on. Well, I have Valoev one point up at the moment, so Hay's well in it. But his defence is up there, but that's, we need to see more of that from David Hay. He has to let more punches go in and get on out of there. I had Hay a point up going into this round, so just goes to show it. Open to a different interpretation. Valoev again trying to trap him in the corner. Hay is out of there. Hay has been doing nighttime training for this fight. He even got up and walked at 2 a.m. this morning for an hour because that's what he was feeling like. That's what his body was telling him. But what he doesn't do is those long endurance runs that most boxers like you did, Jim. Yeah, well, everyone has their own methods. He became the best cruiserweight champion in the world with those methods. So they want good left hook. This is what's required, just a little bit more work to catch the judges' eyes. Because for long spells, it's just a little bit too obvious. He's getting himself out of there. It has to be said, Valuev has been the beneficiary of a number of close-ish decisions in his World Championship fights. When he's nearly always at home, but he's got into the body shot there. The more Valuev can mix it at close quarters with Hay, the more he can make the huge difference in weight tell. Valuev blocking the right hand here from Hay. He must be frustrated, but again, he's keeping his boxing together because this is what he does. Another round where he has to work the whole three minutes under pressure. Just moving a little quicker, they've tried to train him for a bit more speed. Valuev is just doing that bit more than Hay at the moment, I fancy. Shots, right? Other than that, bang on. Okay? Just stop giving him silly shots. Don't get drunk on the success you're having, alright? I think they think he's ahead in the fight. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself who deserves to be winning these rounds. I mean, David is negative for long spells. It's the right tactics, but we need a few more punches. We need some little bursts of punches to impress the judges. Difficult enough getting a, a, a decision over here without doing it on the run, if you like. The judges are from the United States, Italy and Spain, by the way. I don't know a couple of them. I must say the two European judges, never heard of them before. Tom Miller is the other one from the States. Seen him a few times. Luis Pabon, the referee, who's not really had very much to do so far. There yeah, you can see I'm that. See again, straight onto the back foot as you would expect. Valoev just doing exactly the same things. There you can see the Valoev has gone ahead in my card over the last couple of rounds. I just don't feel that David has deserved a couple of little punches here and there, but not enough. To deserve to win the round, Valiev is working or trying to work for the three minutes. One thing that has happened here is that David Hay is surviving okay and he's not getting blown away. Ivana Holyfield said after he fought Valiev, 
He didn't really hit very hard at all for a man of his size. He might be the biggest heavyweight, but he's certainly not the hardest hitting. Well, Valiev shaking his shoulders out there. That's signs that maybe the first signs of tiredness. We want to get the blood flowing in the arms again because he has been hitting a lot of fresh air. I just would have liked to hear the Hay Corner tell him that he possibly needed to do a little more to impress the judges each round. Well, I would have thought the second half of the fight was the tough part for Hay and that they would be looking to be sure of winning the early rounds. I mean, backing off for three minutes and then landing one or two punches in the round. I mean, there is no way they're going to score those rounds to David Hay. It's partly blocked that left hook from Valuev. But well, Hay still looking very strong and the legs still very quick. Yeah, he's trying to go for that left hook. Good counter there with the right hand from Valuev. Came back with one of his own there, showed a bit of speed. Really, for such a man, Mountain. Yeah, and probably the better punch of the two also. That was quick. I think that speed surprised me. I'm sure it surprised David Hay as well. Getting the jab home now, Valoev. Can Hay find one big challenge shot, which would really be a big breakthrough in this fight? You just get the sense that it's still there to be won for David Hay, but you really wouldn't want to rely on the three judges here in Germany, you really wouldn't. Well, I expected things to start becoming tough for David here, and there's a couple of signs in this round that that's the case. He's been caught cleanly a couple of times, which Valuev has struggled to do up to now. Good counter from Hay, got away again, and oh. leers at Valuev across the ring through his gum shield. See if he wants to throw. Okay, okay. If he doesn't, spring in and spring. Okay. Calm in the corner. Adam Boo, the very close boxer and trainer. And once you're clear of that, once you're clear, relax and switch on again. All the training under the railway arches at Vauxhall. Is it going to work? Yeah. Well, the better punching and again the, the, the busier three minutes for me. It was value of again. The good right hand there. Double punch, but we need more of it. Eighth round. I now have value of a point up on my card, having given him all the recent sessions. Still hit and run tactics from Hay, same tactics from the word go. You could argue it's not making for the greatest spectacle, but it's engrossing nonetheless, given the freakish dimensions of value of and how much smaller Hay is. Yeah, as I, as I said earlier, you don't know what it's going to be like until you face a man seven stone heavier. Well, now he knows. Valuev is 4-11 to 11 now to win this fight, and David Hay 2-1 to one against. They started 10-11, to 11, a pair of them. So the bookmakers think this is going Valuev's way. I just think Hay has to do more. He's going to have to do more than this to win the title here. Well, Evander Holyfield failed because he didn't throw enough punches. His movement was good, his tactics were good. So he needs to impress the judges a little bit more. He's better. Just one sharp jab, though. Single shots in the main. Hay may need fast combinations then away again. Valuev so strong. It was Hay really who had the questions to answer in this fight as the former cruiserweight moving up. Well, there's so many missed punches in the fight, I suppose you could score it pretty much a lot of the rounds the way you want to. But uh, unfortunately, he is the one with the negative tactics. That right hand was blocked. But uh, Valoev breathing a little bit heavy, which is the first bit of good news. He's missed so much Valoev here, though. How many jabs has he thrown that have not found their target? I mean, he's plodding forward. I don't think you should give points for just walking forward. You've got to land, Jim. You've got to land. Yeah, but I mean, do, do you win a round with two punches? Well, I think Hayes winning, I think yeah, he's winning, winning this, this round. Yes, he's much more accurate in this round. This is, thankfully, the best round I've seen from David for the, for the last little while. 
This side. is what's needed, you've got, got to get the punches off. Maybe faint a little bit more. Try to get Valoev you know, off balance, but Valoev still boxing at his own comfortable pace. But I agree, this is a better round for Hay. Look at it, missed by Miles. Valoev telegraphed the shot, Hay slipped it easy, came back with something. He's winning this round, if he keeps on doing this, it'll be better. Look how much Valoev missed by then. Then a body punch from Hay, he's gaining confidence there, rounds one up, goes back to his corner, puts the round in the bank. That was better. Eight rounds gone, and I wonder if the best four rounds might be the last four rounds here. Couldn't catch him at all in that round, No, and he was shaking his arms out several times as though he's beginning to feel the tiredness, trying to get the blood back flowing in the limbs to get the strength back again. You've got to remember too, he's 36, seven years older than Hay, who will be the fresher fighter. By the way, Valoev's waist is 48 inches, and I don't think your local department store keep that size in stock. Well, some good work from Hay in that round. Putting punches out, twos and threes, Valoev obviously missing. Important stage in the fight. He needs more of the same here. Needs to repeat that last round in this round. He counterpunched very well. He says all the insults pre fight were to try to make Valoev fight angry, come to him, make errors, and leave himself open to counters. I think we might have a row with the scoring if this goes the distance, you know, a big row. Yeah, well, I've got it close, but I mean, I can see there's a possibility the judges will not like David's tactics. I don't know. Okay, okay, nobody can, nobody can. There's a lot of people out there who think that this uh, world heavyweight division, which has had a bit of a charisma bypass operation in recent years, needs Hayes' colour and explosiveness. Not that he's been colourful and explosive tonight, but. I think he's had to change because it's the only way, isn't it? Yeah, you can't expect him to stand and trade with someone seven stones heavier. He's showing little feints now, trying to draw leads from Valoev. Good tactics, but Valoev just taking his time again. It just might come a point, though, where Hay needs to take the ball by the horns a bit more. Right hand and away again from Hay. Super quick. Stamina's okay, so far, no sign of him tiring badly. Valoev, 22 stone, eight pounds, a 15 stone, eight pounds. Well, Valoev is normally good at getting himself into range, but the speed of here really is confusing him. Good right hand again from here. Super punches, that was a combination. And once again, he was nowhere to be seen once the punches had landed. Valoev tried to find him with a counter. He'd gone. Well, at the moment, he has landed three decent punches, maybe four. Valoev has landed nothing. But we're faced with the question, how will the judges like this? where you'd love to think that the fight is being scored fairly on effective aggression and punches landed. We'll see. Wouldn't be the first row, would it, <laughs> in boxing about a decision? No, and it wouldn't be the first row over here either. Balloweb has not landed a punch this round. There goes David, good right hand again. This is exactly what we need. To make it obvious, he is landing more punches than Balloway. Listen. Welcome back. This is intriguing now in Nuremberg because David Hay, far from fading in the second half of the fight, has probably had his best couple of rounds in the last two. And this could be very close on the cards. Zimian looks like he wants to fight the fight himself. 
Yeah, well, I think he realises he knows what Valoev's like in the corner, and I imagine he doesn't sound all that happy because he just cannot pin this fellow down. Of course, if it was only about size, maybe Pavarotti would have been world heavyweight champion. There's more to it. Yep, well, I have David Hay tightening things up. I had uh, Valoev running away with that little bit of them three points up for the last two rounds to Hay. So things tight on my card. But I keep stressing, we're over here in Germany and David is spending a long time on the back foot. Not that he really had a choice, of course. No, of course not. But in the last couple of rounds, he's let some punches go. And that's what was needed. And Balaev still pumping out the single shots. I don't know what his corner is telling him, but that's not the tactics against a slippery opponent. You have to put punches together, maybe miss with a couple. Be prepared to land with a third of the four. Hey, almost like an annoying wasp circling a man in a deck chair and getting the odd sting in and getting away again but he has to keep on stinging there's a right hand from Valorant there he almost caught Hay in the corner good body shot from Hay he's making him look dreadfully one-dimensional isn't he Valorant here well he looks that at the best of times but he's also frustrated tonight. Normally he can get to opponents, but he just can't seem to do that tonight with Hay. Just a few more punches is what's needed from Hay. Right hand from Valoev. Now the guys watching in the studio for us tonight all think Valoev is winning the fight at the moment. Who uh, can tell? Who can tell how these rounds are being interpreted by our judges? Well, I think Valoev is winning this round, Ian. David is not doing enough. Valoev showing little feints, little threats, it's a bit more technique in what he's doing, not quite plodding forward the way he was doing earlier. Fortunes are swinging this way and that. But Hay just might have to become a lot more positive late on in the fight here. Well, right hand from here, but it was blocked by Valoev. Valoev looking a bit more purposeful in this round. He's staying on here now. Not allowing uh, him to break off and uh, have little breathers. He's staying on him here. And that's what he should be doing, imposing himself. Not allowing he to dictate the pace. Left kick from Hay there right at the end of the round, but I think it was Valoev's round. Nice deep breath. Nice deep breath. How are they reading it in the corner, I, I wonder now? Okay. What about that in six minutes' time? Huh? <laughs> he is going to get desperate. Yeah. You've got to fuck him off. Stop drifting to the corner. Okay. Fidget, fidget. And then when he's sent to the corner. Apologies about the language oh, in the corner. Because okay. every now and again he switches off after he's done that yeah. charge. Get your breath. So we got to do. There's no sense in that corner Clean. Clean. that they think Clean. maybe Hay could be behind in the fight. Well, it depends, Ian. I've said at the beginning that during the build-up, did they really believe they've come here to win the title? Or is it, is it to make a big fuss? But uh, he's really he's shown the discipline, he's shown the tactics, so we have to give him full credit for that. Shown the belief too, but he needs to be a little bit busier. Remember where we are, Ian, even at home, he would be struggling to win a fight with these tactics. The fact that Valoev is missing so much, he can nick rounds onto Hay because he is landing, but his tactics are negative. This is what an American writer once said in a fight rather similar to this. You can't win using Fred Astaire strategy. I mean, there's times you have to ask yourself, are we impressed that does David deserve to go home with uh, Valoev's title tonight? Or does Valoev deserve to keep it is another question I'd ask because he's been pretty awful, frankly. He's been pretty awful, but in every round he's tried to make a fight of it. Everything he's tried to do has been nullified 
but nullifying is not enough. You have to come back with something else. And some of the rounds David has done that, but not at the moment. No, 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 no. Bit messy. Referee is almost been unemployed. At last has something to say. I don't think there's been a single clinch in the fight, and that's to Hayes' credit. He doesn't want clinches where Valuev can lean on. That's good from Hay. Little smile from him as he landed, but there needs to be more. What worries me a bit is that Hay thinks he's putting these rounds away, and he probably thinks he's winning the fight by a mile. I mean, you have to ask yourself, if there's only one decent punch landed in a round, and one man's been on his back foot for the full three minutes. I mean, do, do you score the round on one punch? I mean, it's aggression, you know, effective aggression, what you're putting into a contest. You know, things have to be taken into consideration. Also, quality of the punches that are landing. While he's walking, he needs to be thinking of throwing Hey. The leather has to fly a bit now, I'd say, because we're really into the home stretch of this. He's passed the stamina test, hey, more than passed it. He's got himself in terrific shape for this fight. That match is clear, otherwise the legs would have gone by now. I mean, he's totally frustrated, Balaev, all night long. But is that enough to be taking a world title home? I'm not impressed with the haste quite so much this round. Again, not coming back with enough punches. Yeah, two from Balaev. Took one, gave one. Good jab, two from Balaev. He's very rarely been able to get his jab to work in this contest, though, simply ah. because Hay hasn't been in front of him. Three minutes left. What are they going to say in the corner? Last round, OK? Thank you. First minute, a mugging. Yeah. Then you've got a counter in. But those counters are going, wah, 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 and gone. I'm gone. I have Valo ever three points up. I just do not feel that David is doing enough. He's frustrating him. He's making a miss, but not coming back with enough. Do you understand? All right? Understand. Big, yeah. big effort really? from Hay. Oh, so much left in you. You've got to make it miss, miss, miss. Clean, clean, clean. Clean, clean, clean. He needs this round. He definitely needs this round. This looks like it's going to the judges. Last three minutes for the WBA Heavyweight Championship of the World here in Nuremberg. Valuev has tried to hunt down Hay all night, not with much success but maybe with enough to get the nod on what is basically his home patch. Even though he's a Russian, he's, in boxing terms, an adopted German fighting for the local promoter. what's going through Hay's mind now. I thought at least once during the fight he would have stepped forward and tried to test Valoev's chin. But he stuck to the plan, he's shown tremendous discipline, hasn't done that, so we could well be left wondering what if he landed his best shot on that man's chin. Well, Good the shot plan, there. The plan was based on the fact, I think, that Valoev had never been even hurt in his 16-year pro career. There was no point trying to knock him out. The only way was to try to beat him up on points with speed tactics. Whether those tactics have been carried out effectively enough, of course, is the big question. Good right hand from Hay there. He's probably winning the last at the moment. Valoev out of range with his jab, and you could have said that a hundred times tonight. Yeah, David, make him, making it obvious that Valoev's missing. Valoev trying to drive himself forward. Good, well, two good shots from here. Needs more of that. Sometimes he must feel like it's 
keeper darts and against again. the mouth. Oh, he's got it going with a left hook. What a finish here. Hey, gets to Balowev, who definitely did a silly dance there. He nearly took down the giant. Is David now wishing he had gone for it earlier and tested this man's chin? I just said that half a minute ago. He would regret he hadn't really tested his chin. Well, he tested it there and nearly come up trumps. And another big left hand from Hay and a right hand too. He's certainly finishing the stronger here. Half a minute left in this round as Hay have to keep on going for it here. Is this enough? He's certainly winning this last round and he's done this brilliantly in the last round. He should be giving it everything here. He's away from home. He must know the only sure way of victory here is knockout and he's shown he's got the power to achieve that. He's going for it. He had the giant tottering but not falling. Well, what drama late in the fight. Hey, now, he's conducting the crowd, saying, I've won this, you know. He certainly made Balowev look very silly, and I just wonder whether we're heading for a big controversy here. The fight is over. Hey thinks he's won it, but has he? How have the judges seen it? How have they read all of that? I have Hay a one-point winner. I have Balaev two points up. I just think too many rounds when Hay didn't do enough. And just half a minute before that incident, I was saying, I wonder would Hay go home and regret the fact that he didn't really test, didn't really test Balaev chin. So I have uh, Balaev two points up. But uh, we'll, we'll see now if David Hay's hit and run tactics have impressed the judges. I'd be surprised if they have, especially over here, but I hope with all my heart that they have. I give great credit to the camp. They devised the strategy, Hay kept to it. It probably was the only way to have a chance of winning the fight. Maybe he is in contention to win it, or will Valuev get the nod again in a close fight? It was Tom Miller of the United States, one of the judges, Stefano Carosa of Italy, and Juan Garcia Reyes. Now look at this again, Jim. Well, that's what we're saying. Did he have the power to shake him? And do you know that wasn't even a full-blooded punch? What if David Hay had landed his best shot in Valoev's chin? That was like a cuffing shot with the wrist part of the glove. And look at the state Valoev's in. Shaking his head as though he wasn't hurt, but he certainly was. So I think the question I'm asking, the rounds where David was on the back foot, landing three or four punches, did he deserve to win those rounds if the judges decide, yes, he's going to go home as champion? But uh, it's difficult, you know, under normal circumstances to get a decision over here. But I wonder what if Dave had gone for the knockout earlier? Just run out of time. But even if he's lost this fight on the cards, he's not been disgraced here. He can certainly come again, can't he? It was, it was no way he was proved not to be good enough or anything like that. No, I mean, he did tell everybody he was coming to smash Valoev, but OK, we took that with a pinch of salt. But no, he's proved tonight he can mix it with heavyweights, he can stick to a game plan, he has discipline, and Ian, the scores haven't been announced yet. No. Nope. Good chance. What he's done has impressed at least two of the judges, because let's face it, nothing that Valoev did tonight was all that impressive. I thought he was awful, frankly, absolutely awful. But he usually is. He just plodded forward. There's no doubt that Hay is the fighter with the greater talent and class of the two. We're going to get the decision shortly from Michael Papa. Big, big moment. Has Hay done enough away from home to take Valoev's WBA heavyweight title? They look happy, don't they? But they don't know what the cards say yet. Well, you know, he, he's done a good job of what, win or lose, he knows he's done a good job of what, so he's every reason to be proud of himself. British fans teetering on the edge as well and waiting. Well, look at this from Hay. He's posing like he's won the World Championship. Let's hope that's not premature from his point of view. Of course, a lot of that sort of stuff is to try to sway <laughs> the judges, isn't it, while they're hovering? But I think the cards should have been collated by now. It's taking a long time. Hey, hey. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards.
Juan Manuel Reyes Garcia scores it. 114, 114 even. Stefano Carrosa scores it 116, 112. And Tom Miller scores it 116, 112. To the winner by majority decision. From London, England, the new. David Hay is the WBA heavyweight Sergio champion of the world. What a Taylor. moment. Britain's seventh world heavyweight title holder. British boxing. He did get it right. The judges did appreciate the tactics. It's a magnificent triumph. No fighter in history has given away seven stones in a fight and triumphed until tonight. Well, well, well. Well, we said if David here could get his hands on the best of the title, he would be massive, and he will be massive. Baloev, he's had a few go his way, this one's gone against him, and it was by four points on two of the cards. I have to yep. say, that did surprise me a bit, Ian, it was as wide as that, but the like what David did, fair enough, he boxed on the back foot, he landed punches, I thought in too many of the rounds was a little bit negative, but thankfully the judges have seen it the other way. He said he'd make Valoev look a bit silly. Do you know something? I think he did a bit. He just hit thin air most of the time, Valoev in that fight. Yeah, well, he certainly did that. He frustrated him from start to finish. I just wondered, was he coming back with enough punches? Can you win a round with two punches, two clean punches? Well, obviously you can. What a triumph for David Hay, who's been boxing since he was 10 years old. Still only beaten once by Carl Thompson five years ago when he was just a novice pro. And what was impressive tonight was that he reinvented himself, style-wise, to do that. Yeah, and it was the discipline he showed from start to finish. He never wavered from the fight plan. But I wonder if he had just gone for that chin, just to test Valoev chin a little bit earlier, who knows? I mean, it wasn't even a full-blooded punch that shook him up. What if David's best shot? You've got to imagine it would have put him over. It doesn't matter now, though. He's won it. Doesn't matter at all. <laughs> David is WBA heavyweight champion of the world, and the future is bright. Well, that's great news, isn't it, too, for British boxing? You know, he's going to become an A-list celebrity now. They're going to be clamouring around him. The phone's not going to stop ringing. I think the American market's going to open up for him. He talks well. He... He's a good-looking boy as well. He's got a bit of charisma. And, well, he's the man who slayed the giant. David did slay Goliath. Well, it is official now. It has happened again. Happened thousands of years ago, and it's happening again tonight. Well, we wondered if he was celebrating a little ahead of time before the cards. He was a brave man to do that over here, but it's gone his way. He certainly, if you'd looked at it as an entity, the 12 rounds and the way it finished, you'd say Hay was the moral winner. The way he finished the fight and had Valuev all shaken yeah, up. Yeah, well, certainly the way he finished the fight. And uh, I mean, I, I, I didn't like the way he boxed in a lot of the rounds, but he had no choice. He, he was spotting a seven stone weight advantage to Valuev, so he couldn't have boxed any other way. I just worried that some of the rounds he wasn't doing enough, what he wasn't coming back with enough, but he impressed the judges, and that's all that matters. Well, chaos in the ring as well. In a moment, I think David Hay will be speaking to uh, German television. We'll try to plug you into David all of that. Hay. Here we David. go. Here we go. David, come on. How, <laughs> how does it feel, sounds? Happy world champion of the world. Everything to me. From when I was a little baby, I said I'd be the heavyweight champion of the world. And uh, today, my dreams become true. I fought the biggest heavyweight champion in history. You know, he was very strong. I hit him with big shots. And only in the last round did it, did it seem to hurt him and stun him. But I damaged my hand in the, I think it was the second or third round. So I couldn't throw too many right hands. So I tried to win it extensively with my left hand. You know, I, my, my hand's very tender, very sore. That's why I only used it very, 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 very irregular. When did you realize I can really win against him today? Um, I realized it from when I signed the contract. I knew that I'm the best heavyweight in the world. And today I, I, I found a strategy that wasn't, I didn't train to do that. I trained to be more aggressive, but I damaged my hand, 
So I had to take my foot off the gas and win it clever, use my use win rounds, you know, and, and it worked out. All this trash talking before the fight. Is this just part of the business or what is it? Um, you know, I, I, I'm a guy who says what I think. You know, I think what I say sometimes upsets people. But, you know, I've got full respect for Value. I know I didn't show him any respect before the fight. But, you know, after it, he showed he could take some big shots. And he's a very, very strong man. And I believe he'll win back the title another time. What will happen tonight? Tonight I'm going to party, baby. I'm going to party all night long. Thanks a lot, Thank David. You Party begins right now for, uh, for David Hay, a mixture of delight and surprise from Johnny Nelson, Glenn McCrory and Nicky Piper. This was the moment that David Hay found out he was the champion of the world. What a night, David Hay, the new WBA world heavyweight champion after a points win over Russian giant Nikolai Valuev. Well, the party's going to go on for a long time, that is for sure. Ian Dar talking to the Haymaker. Well, here's the hero of the hour, David Hay. You said you'd do it. You did it. How does it sound? World heavyweight champion. It sounds amazing, you know. I've only dreamt of this. I've only dreamt of these sort of situations, you know. But now it's, it's, it's reality. It's real. And, you know, it means everything to me. It truly does. Everybody doubted there whether you'd have the discipline yeah. to carry on with those tactics for 12 rounds, yeah. but you did. But tell me, did you think you were winning the fight or were you a bit worried about how the judges might be seeing it? He wasn't hitting me, so as long as you're not getting hit, well, that's it. And I'm landing clean flush shots. I know I was landing shots because I caned my hand. I think it was the first, second or third round, really early in the fight. I hit him with an overhand right and his head is solid. It's the hardest thing I've ever hit. It's like hitting a brick wall. I felt a real bad pain in my hand, so I thought, okay, let me sort of, I'm only, I'm only going to use the right hand when his chin was hanging right out. And I saw it in the last round when he was getting desperate. I hit him with a, you know, that, that had a little bit of meat on it. And you saw his legs dance. So he's never, he's, his legs have never gone like that ever in 50-odd fights. But I think it showed people the power that I do have. Yeah, you, you, you were the first man to hurt him. Did you regret a bit you didn't try that earlier, that you might have even uh, taken him my out? Hand, my hand, a lot to shot that hurt him really. That, I could really sort of polish my hand right off. I'm pretty sure he's broke. Um, but, you know, it's a small price to pay for being the heavyweight champion of the world. I knew it was comfortable. I, was, I felt like I was making him look, he looked like a complete amateur novice in there. It felt like I could do, I could drop my hands right in front of him and I felt, I didn't feel in danger. You know, I just felt real good in there. And I'd like to thank all the fans, you know, who came out here. It seems like it's more British than there are Germans out here. And that's, that's, that's I really appreciate that. My, my training camp went so good at the Park Plaza Hotel Resort. It was so nice, you know, they kitted out a whole gym and it was the same gym I've got in North Cyprus. So my training went so smooth and I just, I just love everyone. In the, in the whole history of boxing, no one's ever given away seven stones yeah. and one in a heavyweight title fight. And I think this, my, people doubt my skills. People know I'm a puncher, a brawler, but I can pull, pull skills out of the bag when I have to. You know, when, I've got to check this hand out and you know, there's a few little niggles in training that fit, things didn't go as smoothly as I, I made out, but I did enough to win and that's all that I care about. It's going to be quite a party in Nuremberg tonight, isn't oh, it? Yeah, listen, I just, so it's thousands of that. I really, it was, it was a mousy. You're coming along with us, you're getting smashed with us. It's going to be a <laughs> well, I might even do that. <laughs> Everyone back home in London and all over England are going to be partying tonight. You know, the new heavyweight champion of the world, David Hay. I love it. Many, many congratulations. Well done, David. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations from us all here. A great night for him, uh, a great night for British boxing, but a degree of surprise from you three. Uh, surprise because going into the, into the latter part of the round, uh, Adam Booth had the impression that David was ahead on points where he actually needed the last three rounds, needed to turn it on. Uh, instinctively, David did that to, to pull away with it. That's why they gave him the decision. How did you see it, Glenn? I'm delighted, but I am a little bit surprised. I, didn't, I thought he was following the tactics that we, we thought would win the fight a little bit too much to the letter and he wasn't getting enough punches on to, to make it count um, you know and I just thought he could do the gunsling tactics a little more and, and that would have really closed the show but they got it right they've got the win and that's all that counts and there's a new era dawning and it's David Hayes time. Mickey how do you the, see it? The best and the most talented fighter is now the world champion I, I think there's no doubt about that but I, I had value of winning it by a few rounds because I didn't think Hay was working enough. I thought his stamina was lacking. You know, if he did hurt his right hand, then he's got a genuine excuse. Because I think if he'd have worked harder throughout the fight, he could have knocked him out and stopped him and won it clearly. He's the better fighter, but for me, on the night... David showed us a few things about himself. He showed he's got discipline. He showed he's got the stamina. Which All these questions surprise. that were asked... Yeah. Showed, was showed, that he keep that discipline. Showed that he could stay in there with a fully-fledged 22-stone-plus heavyweight. Mm. So he, 
blew all those myths out of the water. Uh, and, and, and and he boxed and he boxed. I, I the was doubting the himself. stamina because I didn't think he actually did much work at all. I think you knew he didn't have that much energy. But if he's hurt his hand, then then we'll have to see next time. But you know, he sized up the opposition early on. Those sort of cat and mouse tactics from from round one. Perfect tactics. You know, he was trying to get the measure of, uh, of value worth, and at times he did. Uh, he dropped a body shot and just seen the timing, trying to trying to ride value worth shot so he could counter back with him, getting the right hands over the top. And it looked like he was, it looked like he was trying to make value miss an awful lot to take you know to take the sting and to take the, the heavy handedness out of the big man. And you know he was landing with with punches now and again, but it just. For me, though, the, the, there wasn't enough. He sat on the success of the, the first three rounds and thought, yeah, I've got this, I've got the measure of him. And that's when he kind of sat back a bit, I got a bit complacent. And that's when value did, started to did enough in the early him. rounds, though. You know, he was landing the better shots, and that's what, obviously what the judges were scoring on. But the middle rounds, you know, value have started to put the pressure on. And, and that was interesting. The value have kept working. I, and I, David didn't do that much at all. But then maybe he's just getting in, in his Bayern, mind, he's Bayern, got a bad Bayern hand. Bayern wasn't that effective, was he? I mean, he was walking forwards, the boys pointed out, but he did miss an awful lot himself. And, and David, you know, I mean, how many of these shots are hitting? They didn't hit no. him, no. That, that, that's what David was saying. They were missing. They were missing. David wasn't landing himself. But this is where it swayed opinion because Valley Wolf was the one that was pushing for it. David was slipping his shots, not getting hit as much. And that's why you're thinking, well, Valley Wolf's ahead. He started to run away with it. Then David all of a sudden started to put yeah, his foot on the gas. Yeah, really eye catching stuff. Yeah, yeah. The eye catching punches were coming from Hay, you know, and that's that's what he needed to do, and that's obviously what took the, the judges out. And, and the out. better punches, I, I, but you know, the, he came for eight and nine, he did really well. Uh, there's um, no there's no other way you're going to beat Value with, uh, apart from like this, get in, pinch it, steal it, may even stick the house out, but that's yeah. the only way you can do and, it, and I think it, the smaller and guy. And if his hand wasn't hurt, he'd probably do it more often, which is what we wanted, he could have won it quite clearly. And then yeah. this, <laughs> left hand, it was a left hand that did it, not the right hand, that's right. Where David's, which is David's power shot, the left hand staggered a big man, has never been staggered before. Now, now this shows David's got the power to really control the heavyweights. We really thought he had the power, and I think he does. If they boxed again, if he, if he well, has we, hurt his hand, he can knock him we out. We were expecting that in the third, or you know, maybe do it in the third, maybe do it in the fifth, maybe do it throughout the fight. That's what we thought we'd do. And Valuev just plodded on, scoring punches. Maybe thought he'd get it, but. David's before got before the fight, the David kept talking about he's gonna go to knock him out. I never believed that in an instant. I thought this is this was his plan. Showed stamina, and then for the last part of the fight, he stepped it up. We all thought he was behind going into the tenth round, and then he stepped up, put his foot on the gas, and started to pull away with the fight with a cracking big left hand in the last round. Last round. Let's throw forward now. I mean, a world heavyweight champion, a British fighter that's got all the attributes that David Hay, that the heavyweight division suddenly come alight tonight, hasn't it? Well, I think that's what the world wanted, you know, and I think David's in the right place at the right time. He says the right things. He looks the right way. And, you know, there's some big, big money fights out there for him. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the heavyweight division has got a bit of a star, hasn't it? The heavyweight division is lit up. He's exciting. He can punch. He looks good. He can box. We've seen him box really well tonight. You know, he's got so much to offer the division. A lot more to offer than what we saw tonight because yeah. he, he yes. did the tactics to beat a monster no, of a man. No. He, he stole a decision and that's what it took. No bravado, a lot of discipline now looking, and he yeah. did it. Now look at all the heavyweight. Which other heavyweight is as colourful, as usual, got as much potential as David Hay at 29 years old, become a former world cruiserweight champion, now a heavyweight champion. Who has got more longevity out of all the heavyweights in the divisions? Let's head back to Nuremberg. Final thoughts from Jim and Ian. Well, I think the boys are being a little bit harsh because there's a party mood here. I think the feeling is that David Hay fought the only way you could to beat Nikolai Valiwev, and the judges appreciated what he did, after all. Yeah, well, we do call boxing the art of self-defence, and David put up a tremendous back foot, the de defensive battle. I have to, to say, I didn't think he did enough to win. I think there were too many rounds, but the rounds were decided by one or two punches. There were rounds where hardly one clean punch was landed, but the judges must have been appreciated David's defensive boxing, his evasive boxing. I'm delighted he got the decision. I think it's the best thing that can happen to the heavyweight division. It wasn't all that exciting tonight, but it will be when he defends his title. Massive time now for world heavyweight boxing, thanks to David Hay. I thought he did win. I thought he was the boxer who boxed to a plan and value have missed all night, nearly all night. Anyway, what about for David Hay now? I mean, presumably he has to fight John Ruiz, who stepped aside to let this fight happen. Yes, and that will be a good fight. John Ruiz is not in too many good fights, but I think with David Hay it will be a good fight because he's a full-blown heavyweight, he's a good uh, tactician, and he boxed well tonight, so that's a fight we can look forward to. Wonderful if it's in London.